Hi everyone, uh, I'm Neha Chahan and we are here with the members of Revival Disability India, a UN recognized collective. Uh, we collaborated with Revival on the primary research for our uh, project on inclusive education and we're going to talk to them today about the project, the idea of inclusive education and the importance of uh, documenting and learning from the lived experiences of people with disabilities. Um, hi, No. Hi, Ashwarya. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, so, for starters, can you talk a little bit about yourself and uh, what Revival Disability India is all about? I am Ashwarya. I live with Marfan syndromes. It's a chronic illness. <clears throat> Sorry. And I work with Revival Disability India as a researcher and a curator. No. So, uh, hi, I'm No. I started Revival Disability India. And um, the reason I started it is that uh, growing up as disabled queer folks, uh, we all know that the only reference point that we've had in our entire lives is that of me being and achieving able bodied um, expectations. Um, and how the, the entire world is designed for only one uh, normative body, right? So the sole purpose why revivalism in India was created was that of survival, uh, of um, disruption, of disabled anger and dissent. Um, most of us um, that have become activists and human rights defenders um we become that way because um we have been compelled to do so right nobody has um taught us how to walk proudly into a room um with our disabled queer walk we often teach ourselves to love and to grieve our own disabled body to sit sing and just be with our disability um Many of us have parented ourselves. When we say that we are within academic institutions, it's not just um, the fact that our uh, that we we physically sit in a classroom, right? We sit in a classroom along with our identities, along with our body, um, along with histories of oppression. Um, along with situated embodied contexts of our lived experiences. Um, so I would say that when I first entered um, an education institution, um, I, I have an acquired disability. So I entered school um, when I was able-bodied and uh, when I was about nine years old, I became disabled. So I returned to the classroom as a disabled individual, right? And growing up in a very um, compulsory, able-bodied and heteronormative society, um, I was declared a novelty, uh, the only visibly um, physically disabled child um, in a classroom full of non-disabled children. Um, My heart was degrading. So I don't remember exactly when I started taking the pills for my heart and how I went into depression in 9, 10, 11, 12. My teachers would call my parents into a parent-teacher meeting and tell them that she just sits on the last bench she has no friends, she does not talk, I've never seen her smile, and many more things like that. So when I entered the college, my father wasn't very sure about it because I was told that I would go under a open heart surgery, like from the beginning, like first years, apply karne se pehle. And my father wasn't sure that my health would take it off and things like that. And I somehow convinced him and I went for a bachelor's degree against my parents' will. 
and I promise that if my health will fall out, I'll leave the course. Like, what else can you do? And if you are that tall and that lean, a lot of stigma follows you around. Like, a lot of stigma follows you around. Like, you're never going to find a guy. You are flat chested. You are so thin. You won't be able to have kids. And things like that. And then, and then when they look at your scar, they're like, I've never met a person like that. Like, are you okay? I am okay. <laughs> For a disabled person, you need to have like, you know, physical aspects missing from your body, which are counted. And I don't come under a disabled person in India. I can qualify as a disabled person only after two years after my open heart surgery. So I am bound to have consecutive surgeries all over my life after 10 or 12 years about your experiences in you know your school and um, colleges and uh, what I've noticed while researching on this project was that there's a lot of focus on the physical environment when it comes to conversations about inclusive education and how yes. you know the buildings can be made more accessible and stuff like that yes. uh, while these are important the social environment is something that's often overlooked um, there's still a lot of lack of awareness and insensitivity, yes. like you discussed. Um, so what do you think can be done by colleges and other stakeholders to address this? Uh, better ice breaking sessions in the colleges, like when the orientation thing happens. So we should talk about disability or mental health disorder or any sorts of illnesses out in the upfront. and make them feel like make them feel confident about how to go about a new life into this college or into this university because what lacks in India is about the awareness and how to actually talk about things in a positive manner rather than just like okay disabled students are here non-disabled students are here disabled students come into this room I'll tell you ki access kaise kaise kis kis tarah se hona chahiye when other activity curriculum activities dance songs and things like that how to be more and more involved in that because I think it is very difficult for a I think it's 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 very lonely at the same time when you want to feel included, but you also know that I don't think the other person is going to understand. There are communities or groups or people who are out there who would want to help, but how to reach out to them? Come to university, it's a different era or it's it's a different environment. Everyone is, everyone goes on and about a lot of things like bunking classes, making girlfriends, boyfriends, eating new food. And in fact, in the interviews also, they, few of the students have said that they felt bad because they, the canteen was not accessible. I understand you're making the classroom accessible. I understand that you're making the way to the classroom accessible. But canteen also is a very important part even the playgrounds and any other other areas which are also important for the college life. Um, I also want to ask uh, Ashwarya this because she was a part of a lot of interviews that we did for the project. Um, how was your experience with the interviews? Uh, is there any particular incident or a conversation with the student uh, that you want to talk about? Like, did, did you come across something that you didn't expect or how was your experience like? Um, it was a very uh, path-breaking experience and uh, initially I was, uh, when I approached people for the interview, uh, they felt a bit uh, uncomfortable and restricted because I think ki it is very difficult to get someone to talk about something that personal and as I have my own experience uh, I can say that uh, when you are young and trying to find an affirming place in this society uh, having a disability makes you feel very vulnerable very scared and very alone it's something that you would want to hide Ki, I should try my best and not talk about it maybe not be seen with it and uh, so when, when I started the interviews, I used to say that I come from this organization. I work with Revival Disability India and that's how I'm here and that's why I'm taking your interview. So 
rather than to, rather than doing this i started saying ki i am ishwarya i live with marfan syndrome i have a chronic illness i have had one open heart surgery and i suffer from panic disorder or depression or nervous breakdowns which made them feel that maybe this person is also coming from the same page for um the same old participants to participate in the study my or non disabled researcher right so it's very out there the topic is like a hot topic to use to research around the same students and um there are not enough experiences of the same researchers themselves from their own positionalities while um researching on the same on on the same population um and i think our our research study kind of counters that um narrative and discourse so that's all from my end uh, it was great talking to you no and shwara about uh, this um our report on inclusive education uh, will be launched very soon at sprf.in without a paywall uh, please check it out to know more about the topic thank you